Frank Ragnow of your Detroit Lions. You are now tuning into the official new hotness, the One Pride Podcast, presented by ISN. This is your source for all Detroit Lions news, rumors, pre and post game day breakdowns. Go Lions! What is going on with that music, folks? That is a really way to start this thing. I don't know who it is. I thought that was Mike. That was not me. <laughs> so did I. That was somebody else. So did I. It wasn't, it's not me. I was like, is this new? But welcome to the One Pride Podcast where we have weird jingles to enter this bad boy. And I want to thank Frank the Rich Tank Rag now for introducing us. Folks, we are here with Cy Gray. What's going on, Cy? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah no, I hear you. Hey, what's going on, guys? Good to be back. Hey, it's great day to have you on here. We got Antonio Hightower. What's going on? Oh, what's up, guys? What's up, guys? Great to be on here today. <laughs> hey, we knew it. We knew it. And we got Corey from the Warpath. What's going on, Warpath? What's up? What's up? Nothing much but the rent. That's about it. <laughs> hey, that's facts. That's facts. If Warpath doesn't have his war paint on, but he will soon. If they're Washington Red Wolves, we'll see. And, of course, we got Mark Orem from Orem's Forum. What is going on? What's going on, guys? Let's talk some Lions football on the One Pride. And, folks, we have Troxel Sports Talk, Sports Fury Sports Trox. What's going on, Troxel Sports Talk? Woo! Hey, Frank the Tank just got paid. Hey, shout out to our starting center. Oh, well deserved, man. Well deserved. Absolutely. And we appreciate Frank the Tank getting paid and protecting Jared Goff from getting Thanks. sacks to the face. We got James Yoder in the building. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe to James Yoder. He's a Michigan fan from Chat Sports. He loves the Wolverines. And I think he's having a rough – his favorite person, folks, is Jim Harbaugh. We all love Jim Harbaugh over here if you're a Michigan <laughs> fan. No doubt about it. We got sure. Zach's in the building, Jimmy Ward star, War Varwin. <laughs> we have Randy Daniels, Big West Conniven. I love that name. We got Christopher Green, Tim Monroe. We got – who else is in here? We got TA Noble Sports. Eric, welcome to the One Pride Podcast, John Dundura, and we're going to get this thing cracking about our Detroit Lions frog crop in the building as well. Folks, if you haven't hit that like button, smash that like button. How is it we only got 26 likes when there's 45 in the building? Get that bad boy up. Let's show, these, let's show the world that the Detroit Lions do actually have a fan base, regardless of what the legacy mainstream media believes in. We truly, truly do. Trucks of Sports Talk, a big guy got paid today. Frank the Tank Ragnow, initial thoughts. Man, I am excited. Uh, when Frank the Tank gets paid, man, you know good things are about to happen because one of the most important positions is your starting center. Uh, he's the guy that gives the ball to your quarterback. So if you don't have a good one and you didn't pay your good one, there's going to be a conflict of interest. So I'm excited, man. You know, like I said earlier, it's it's super well deserved. He he's a tank, uh, you know. He he's a gamer. You know, if it's one dog I I can see on this offensive line, it's definitely Frank Ragnow. Yeah, and he's got a great part in the movie, Old School. If you ever seen it, make sure you check it out. He's running through the quads, man, and uh, he is definitely an individual we want to have on this team. Mark Orm from Orm's Forum, Frank the Tank getting paid. What do you think, man? Oh, man, I'm loving it, man. Uh, locking up one of the big men on that line, man, that solidifies at center to at least 2026, barring injury, knock on wood. Um, we knew it was going to happen, man. They picked up his option. We knew the next step was going to be him getting locked up long term. Um, it's, it's 30, now he's the highest paid center in the league. Guy's gotten better ever single ever since 2018 being drafted. Um, came in, man, team guy, went to guard, didn't say a word. Moved over to uh, center in 2019 and just has improved ever since, gotten better and better. So top three center in the league. You knew the money was coming. I'm glad we have him on our team, man. Let's go. Tony Hightower, Thanks. you're definitely an individual that comes up with the weirdest answers, and he definitely goes <laughs> left. What do you think about Frank the Tank getting signed, man? I'm glad they did it, and I'm actually glad they did it now. 
this year before the season because I don't want any other centers getting paid. Let Frank reset the market, let them follow mm-hmm. later. Next thing you know, all of a sudden, some center getting paid 14, 15 mil. Now you got to pay Frank 16 mil. I'm not, I'd rather just pay him now. It's probably going to be the cheapest he's ever going to be because the price tag is only going to go up. Um, it's great to have him. We got him for what, like, we got him guaranteed for another six years. It's great to go along with Taylor Decker. Um, we're gonna have Sewell for at least five at the least. Um, this old line is gonna be together for a long time, so let's just hope we can find a quarterback to go with him. Now, Corey, you're not a Lions fan, no, or a Washington football team fan, <laughs> <laughs> clearly. No, what do you think no. about Frank Rag now? He's one of the best centers in the NFL, if if not the best, and he's getting paid like it. What do you think about spending that money on O line? Well, you all have a concerted effort at running the ball. You got Ragnow, who's a top what top three center in the league. Uh, last year, Pro Football Focus had him ranked third uh, among all centers in run blocking. So there you go, right there with that. Now you take what you said. You had Decker. You have Sewell coming in there. You're solidifying. You're getting ready to protect uh, Jared Goff. Hopefully you can get that running game established there. But the guy, I I mean, he's improved every year. He's been there kind of echoing what Mark said. And he's been a top six center, according to Pro Football Focus, the last two years. So, I I, I mean, this is a good pickup. The guy turns 25 in two weeks. So, uh, you're getting him at at the prime of his career. And um, it's boding well. And I'm going to hold to what I said before. Y'all have the makings of a team that could slip in there and get that seventh seed out of the NFC, um, and that's just the start of it. I think y'all have got some good things going on up there in the Motor City. It's important to protect the quarterback, folks, because why? In the NFC North, there is a lot of – I'm giving her a D, man, a strong, a strong D. A lot of strong Ds in the <laughs> NFC North, and it's important to make sure we don't get golf penetrated by those strong Ds. It is vital <laughs> – to keep it that way, Cy. Wow. What do you think, man? Overall, this offensive line going forward, we got Frank Rag now. We got Panay Sewell. What do you like about this bad boy? I like the entire thing. Uh, the only thing that I'm kind of worried about is that right guard position. But uh, as far as Rag now is concerned, that's the only person that touches the ball more than the quarterback. So uh, he touches the ball every play. The dude. He's uh, a beast. I'm, yeah, he, he is a beast, uh, definitely top three center in the uh, NFL. And like Tone said, hey, let's not play be reactionary. Let's be proactive, set the market. We understand what the expectation is. So kudos to the staff, uh, to the organization. I think we got, uh, we're, we're set for a long time, definitely at that position. Yeah, man, you definitely, because we got to protect our it's my quarterback. our quarterback, and that's what you do with Frank the Tank Rag now. But there was a good moment yesterday where the Lions had a victory. And I don't know if you've heard it, unless you've been living under a rock, but he's officially not a Detroit Lion as of an hour ago, and that's Carry On Knee Johnson. Yes, he is no longer Detroit Lion, was released. And I was excited, man. I definitely was. But, Trox, what do you think, man? What do you think about Carrion Johnson no longer a Detroit Lion? Well, you know, when you have, you know, some elite blocking skills that you can't be cut for and you get cut, you know, Sums up. you know, a, ability is – the best ability is availability. You didn't show no a, ability to be available. So, I mean, carry on, you can carry on. Carry on out of Detroit. (laughs) One Detroit, one pride, baby. You know, as soon as Jamar Jefferson was picked up by the Lions in the seventh round with the third last pick in the draft, we all knew here at ISN that the time of Carry on Johnson was over. It was a matter of days that his time was numbered. He was not good for the Detroit Lions, always injured. All he could do was pass block. As a second round draft pick, we don't want that. But, hey, Corey, what do you think about Kerryon Johnson? Would you pick him up for your team? I think you're muted, Corey. Muted. You're muted, Corey. Got to oh, speak. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've picked up worse. I think we've picked up better before. Um, you know, availability <laughs> is your best asset, and this is something Kerryon Johnson hasn't been. And, uh, you know, I, I – 
work with people from uh, uh, that went to Auburn, and I, I'm not a big Auburn fan, so that kind of um, that kind of puts a little um, sour thumb in the pudding for me. Make sure you go ahead and like, subscribe, and share this. The shares you get, hey, it gets more out to the individuals out there. We're going against the legacy media and other YouTubers, so let's get that dub there. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to everybody on the channel here, and we're going to get this thing crack a lack. And Mark Orm from Orem's Forum, yes. carry on Johnson. Is yes. it or is it legitimate that he's gone? I've... I've read that he's legitimate gone. I know Brad Holmes came out about, I think I think there was an article out about nine, maybe nine, ten hours ago that they were trying to trade him. They were trying to trade him. Nothing was official, but as of like an hour ago, he's gone. He's been released. Uh, he's no longer a Detroit Lion. Um, it's, it's, it's all over uh, social media if you want to go check it out. Um, it was something that probably needed to be done, man. The guy was... The guy has bad knees. He's 23 years old. Those knees aren't going to get any healthier at 23. You know what I mean? Like, yes, he's young, but when you already got bad knees, man, that's that's a that's a bad thing to have, man. Especially at that age, man. The guy's got a guy's got a knee brace on, size on my head on his knee. It's not good. It's not a good thing. He's lost. <laughs> guy lost his job to a rookie last year, and he lost his job to a 35 year old running back. No disrespect to Adrian Peterson, Hall of Famer. But man, he he got de he got he got demoted, literally to a blocking back. Um, he, he was a good one too. He was a really good blocking back. But for a second round pick and for guys that they can grab in the draft, they, they drafted Jamar Jefferson. They picked two more up, and I was an undrafted free agent. The writing was on the wall. Bye bye, carry on, carry on, our wayward son. Bye bye, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Antonio Hightower, what do you think about carry on, carry on? on? Man, the Lions curse of running backs is continuing. You know, if you look at the Lions drive picks, they have not been doing good with running backs. Job no. best, Michael LaShore, Carry on Johnson, and Amir Abdullah. And the problem is a lot of them they look good and then they just get injured and they almost look the same. It's mm -hmm. just the Lions have a curse on running backs, man. Hopefully yeah. Swift don't gotta go through that. Because man, the Lions. The Lions just curse with running backs, especially in the first two rounds. This is yeah. it's crazy. For sure. And when it comes to Carrion Johnson, he used to be able to cut with his knees, but the <coughs> only cut he can do now is what happened today. Cy Gray, what do you think about Carrion Johnson? Just, just as I started talking, the video feed goes out, uh, Listen, man, uh, I wish him well. Uh, I was never a fan of Carry On Johnson. I know he didn't draft himself, but he was overdrafted. Uh, we already he already had the same injuries that he's experiencing now. It was present in, in college, so mm -hmm. I never understood the pick. Um, then combine that with his immaturity, um, everything just equates to thumbs down for me. So I hope the young man well. Hopefully, he grows up a little bit more. Uh, learns a lot from his time in Detroit. Hopefully he heals and goes on to bigger and better things. But for us, I'm not going to miss him. I'm not going to miss him a whole lot either there, Troxel Sports Talk. What was your best memory of Carry On Johnson? The day he got cut. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, man. No, I mean, let's, let's face it. You know, I mean, when we got Jamar Jeffers – or. Yeah, Jamar Jefferson, and then we went out and got uh, last chance to you, uh, Raheem Boyd. Hey, those two guys are gonna are gonna churn some heads. People mm -hmm. are disrespecting them. They got it, especially Raheem Boyd. A lot of people are disrespecting them, and I think Raheem Boyd and Jamar Jefferson are gonna say, you know what? You're gonna doubt me. We got a chip on our shoulder. We were almost Mister Irrelevant. And uh, and and somewhere is so irrelevant that they got picked up an undrafted free agent. But you know, if, if we've learned through the draft process and things like that, you know, it, it comes it boils down to, you, you know, you, if you don't show heart, you're not going to make it in the National Football League because you have to show. Hey, you know, what did what did Benny Blade say yesterday? You know, if if you're not dead, 
or in the hospital already, you're going to just tape it up and go back out there and play, you know, because you're not going to let your teammates down. And I felt like Carrion Johnson has always left left a sour taste in our mouths by not being available or going down with an injury and things like that. So I, I'm yep. excited uh, that he's gone, and that's basically my best memory, him leaving. Folks, if you ain't been on Troxel <laughs> yeah. Sports Channel, yeah. check yeah. out yesterday. We were live with Benny Blades, Lions great safety, just powerhousing people. It was a great interview. The guy's hilarious. It was a really real fun time, so check that out after this stream on his channel we also signed antonio hightower a tight end because a tight end all of a sudden just decided to retire out of nowhere josh hill so the lions picked up a fairly good tight end yesterday actually played for the detroit lions a couple years back and did decent what is your thoughts on the pickup um it's a solid pickup um the line the the tight end room it's very devoid of talent i actually wanted them to at least try to get a guy just, just, just a guy too late in the draft, round fifth, sixth round, or whatever. Um, I still think they probably should add to it. You know, there's another guy in free agency they can go out there. Um, Trey Burton probably be cheap. Um, could be a legit number two next um, next to TJ. But you know, Fels is gonna be a good blocker. My, he's not gonna give you much in the receiving game, but it's gonna be a big body that you can target. Um, he just he's gonna be a solid player, and I feel like. I still feel like they should add a little bit more to the room. Yep. Wrong. And again. What do you think about the pickup there, Cy? Got a new tight end. Do you think it's an upgrade over Josh Hill getting him? What do you think? I don't think it's necessarily an upgrade. Uh, you had a lot of position flexibility with uh, Josh Hill. You know, they lined him up at tight end, at fullback. So, um, like you said, he, Darren Fells is at least he's familiar with Detroit, although it's a new regime. Uh, I think it's just another body. Uh, I would like to see a little more diversity in the uh, tight end room as well. Um, but overall, I, I mean, I give it a, it's a C. I mean, it's an average pickup. Nothing wrong with it. It's not failing. So it's okay. Mark Orr for Orem. What do you think about Fells? I think it was a great pickup, man. Uh, it was something that kind of needed to be done. Um, like everyone's saying it on the panel there, uh, the, uh, the room there, it's not very, um, there's not a lot of experience over there. Um, Fells brings some experience now, him and Hawk. Um, he's, he's, I, I keep forgetting how big Darren Fells is. The man's six, seven, 270 pounds. So it's almost like you're getting another offensive tackle out there that he, he can block and, and he's a red zone monster. The guy scored. The guy has scored eleven touchdowns in the last two seasons with Houston. So, um, he, you know, he he brings that element to the game, and um, I think it's good. I, I think it's nice for Jared Goff too. He has another red, another weapon in the red zone. Yeah, he, look, I think he did fine with the Detroit Lions last time around. He's done fine last year with the Houston Texans. We need an individual that can block, 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 and block. And guess what? That's what we got here when it comes to fells because we're a team that's going to be running the football quite a bit. I don't know if you've known, but getting to Panay Sewell, you know, releasing Carry on Johnson, who is not a Detroit Lion anymore, unlike Ooh. what people may think. He's no longer <laughs> Detroit Lion. He's He's gone. So I think that this team is going to a more running football team and Fells brings to that. Let's talk about the NFL draft. Let's just get into it, Trox. Who was your favorite pick in this draft for the Lions? Um, yeah, Man, between the both D tackles and Panay Sewell, man, I don't know what, what. Man, hey, those first three picks were box office. Why? Because you're solidifying the trenches. Games are won and lost in the trenches. So when you got a guy that's able to, you know, uh, bat the ball on the defensive side, catch his own batted ball, and score it for a touchdown, you're getting something. You know, uh, I, I feel like with the with both D tackles, what they're going to do, I, I have heard uh, some, some news that they're going to be running a three-man front. And... Uh, you know, but if you if you have both these guys out, you know, maybe on a on a four man front, you know, you're gonna get penetration in, uh, in the middle, 
And then you're going to have to deal with your outside edge rushers. You know, maybe that that's what's going to have uh, Trey Flowers get more than seven and a half uh, sacks. Maybe that's going to help Deshaun Hand, uh, who I feel is going to play defensive end because I, I was actually going through the list and uh, defensive tackle is still open, uh, even on a three-man front and also uh, uh, as an edge rusher. But, uh, you know, that can get him back going to where he once was at, at the University of Alabama. So, you know, it, helping that defensive front with Akeem, uh, Akeem McNeil and Levi, uh, I'm going to call him Levi O. Uh, so Levi I O, man. His name is, is difficult to pronounce. <laughs> hey, absolutely. You know, but... Uh, you know, so when you got that penetration on the inside, you know, it's going to open up a lot of doors that we have been deficient in for so many years. And then, you you know, you solidified the offensive line with Panay Sewell. You know, we should solidify this super chat here. We appreciate you. Four ninety nine. What do you guys think about the Lions running a 3-4 defense? Mark Oram from Oram's Forum. Let's answer this man's super chat. Hey, man, um, I was a little shocked about it. I was a little shocked about it, but I kind of understand it, man. They're looking for it. I think this is going to be a rotation heavy. Um, you're going to see a lot of these D tackles in there. You're going to see Ali McNeil eating, eating up the middle, probably with Penasini. You're going to see Levi O. Uh, <laughs> Levi O playing that 3-4 defensive end spot. Um, he can even play inside, too. And you have Flowers in there. You might even see Romeo standing up. I kind of like him, man. All the guys that we have are are, are players that are going to be able to get to the quarterback. Um, even our even our linebackers have some pass rush ability with Jamie Collins, Anzalone. Uh, they can kind of get to, and then Barnes throwing Barnes in the middle. He, I guess he it's been um, established that he will be playing in the middle, um, and I really like that because uh, he was one of my favorite draft picks in this draft. I just didn't know where they were going to put him. I'm glad they've already told uh, everybody that he's going to play the middle, and. Um, I'm liking it, man, because it's, it's you can't have enough D linemen. You can't have enough D linemen, and you can't have enough pass rush. And all our guys have have the ability to stop the run and ability to rush the passer. And uh, I think that's a bonus for the Detroit Lions, man. I do not think that we're going to trade for Julio Jones. Why do I say this? Well, because we're in a hmm. rebuild slash retool mode. Yeah, and we're not going to get a veteran wide receiver who's at the back end of the career and give up a second or a late first round pick for him it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense from the Lions standpoint but yeah I think we're going to roll with the receivers that we got Amon Ross St. Brown underrated and he's going to help that out but Antonio Hightower what is your favorite draft pick for the Detroit Lions this year my favorite draft pick um I guess I go with uh, Levi Onzerike number it's really close between him and Big Neal for me, especially because what they're going to offer in terms of pass rushers. But Levi is probably my number one super athletic dude. Um, he's not the biggest dude, but he's powerful. He's got powerful hands. He's, somebody actually compared him to Sean Hand, which is ironic that we drafted him. Um, yeah, athletic, powerful hands. I can't wait to see what he's going to do in his defense, um, especially that's going defense is going to allow him and it's going to put him in the right position because at Washington, they kept playing him as a nose tackle for some reason. Like he's not 290 pounds. Um, let him get into this defense. It's going to let him penetrate because we're probably going to be a one gapping team. Going to let him penetrate, get up field quickly. Um, you know, you got, you got a few things you need to improve on. He hasn't really played. He opted out last year. I know the whole Pac-12 was kind of, I don't know what was really going on with the Pac-12 in terms of their season. Um, so he's probably gonna be a little rusty. He went to the senior bowl, he was only there for one day, so I don't know what happened that one day. Um, but yeah, I think he's a great pickup for us, and he's probably my number one. Make sure you guys hit that like button, let's get the likes out there. What do you guys think in the grades? Go in the chat and grade it A, B, C, D, or F of the Lions draft. I'm just curious to see what you guys think. I think we had an A grade. I was pretty happy to see the value that we got, a couple value picks, such as Amon Ross St. Brown. I really like that pick. And getting Jamar Jefferson with the uh, third last pick in the NFL draft, 
I knew that would kick out carry on Johnson. It was fairly easy to see, so that made me happy. John Bradshaw, A plus 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 plus. A lot of A pluses there. We got Cy with an A, Nick Watkins with an A, Mike Taft with a bunch of A A A A A. We got Rick Russo, solid A plus B minus from Randy Daniels. He wasn't too happy about that one. Let's see here. We got a B P blues. He says lowercase a, B, because they're all unproven rooks. Vash Starwin, he is the hype guy, man. Dude drinks Kool-Aid, but not today. That was a little spiked. A++ for Big West. Frog Crop, A for sure. A member of mine, Antonio Hightower, says B+. That When Antonio Hightower gives it a B+, that means it was probably more like a triple A, uh, the credit rating of the United States. Let's see here. $5 Super Chat, Eric Minion Senior, thank you so much. I think in two to three years we'll be completing, competing for the playoffs and winning the game. What do you think? Yes, I do too. I think it will be next year this team's going to improve extremely better from what it was this year. Why? We got more draft picks. We have a whole year of the new regime, and we're getting rid of the Patriot players. It took a little bit of time. I think they will compete. And especially if Aaron Rodgers is no longer in this division – which it's looking like that, then, yeah, you, you have a legitimate shot to get that bad boy. $10 Super Chat. Honestly, I feel huge change overall. No more same old Lions. I give a huge A from the staff and probably the Water Boys. Uh, hey, Roger Guardo, we appreciate you. And that $9.99 Super Chat goes back to the channel where we upgrade everything. And I appreciate it. Yeah, man, I think that. A for the staff. They're doing a fantastic job. Everyone's getting there and doing their, their task as well. Trox, grade this draft. Hey, I give it an A-plus uh, grade. Uh, they went and got one of my guys that I, I've kind of been talking about, and that is uh, Derek Barnes. Um, I definitely like Derek Barnes a lot. He brings a lot to the table. And, you know, and then like I said earlier, you know, you solidify that defensive line. You solidified that, uh, well, the middle of the defensive line. Then you solidify, you know, a little bit of your uh, your uh, offensive line. And in undrafted free agency, you know, let's not sleep on the guys we brought in there. You know, Tommy Kramer yeah. is Kramer, one of my favorite. Uh, bro, I love Tommy Kramer. I think, you know, between him and Stenberg, that's going to be your staple at right guard for years to come. Tommy Kramer, mm -hmm. if you don't know, he's our undrafted rookie that we picked up from Notre Dame, four-year starter. Actually kind of shocked that yeah. he fell out of the, the draft completely, but we picked him up. That would be a sleeper to make the team, and I, I was looking at him, and I liked what I saw. Four ninety nine super chat from Nick. Any free agents still out there that they would want us to sign? I think there's a couple free agents out there. I'm not going to say no big splash. We're not going to get a, a big name, but eh, low-tier free agents. What do you think, Cy? I mean, I'm all for it, uh, bringing in a little more veteran leadership uh, as long as we get the right type of people in the building uh, with the same mentality. And uh, I think they're doing an outstanding job at betting all of the players, the entire roster. So as uh, long as it's, you know, not going to cost us an arm and a leg, I don't have anybody out on the – specifically, on yeah, specifically I wouldn't want uh, – I don't have anybody, but – yeah, it's just got, it's a matter of character and fit. Okay, okay, I see you there. I see you. I think if we can get like a Kenny Vaccaro, maybe that would be nice. Hey, that we would need be help awesome. at safety, bro. We need help at safety. What do you think, Mark Orham from Orham's Forum? Um, I don't have anybody in in mind right now. Um, I don't really. I haven't looked at the free agent list in a while, but I know I would like to grab another safety somewhere down the line, like everyone's talking about. Um, I, I think we still need another linebacker, possibly. Um, I don't really trust Maven too much. I know he's just a cover, he's just a cover linebacker for our team. Guys been playing special teams for the for pretty much since he's been a lion. So um I think we, we're gonna need we're, we're gonna need to go grab somebody on defense 100 percent Wouldn't be shocked if they went out and tried to get another wide receiver on the cheap as well. Um it just brought some camp bodies in. So on, on my list, I don't have anybody names, but uh, position-wise, wide receiver, safety, and uh, definitely linebacker. 
If you got questions, we may have answers just to your asking. If you ask me, I definitely have answers. If you ask on the warpath, Corey there, he's just going to look at you cross-eyed, man. This guy doesn't know a whole lot about Detroit Lions. He doesn't actually know a whole lot about anything. Said no, and I'm just playing. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe to this channel. This guy's, this guy's got a lot of good content. He's one of the best YouTubers out there, and that's why he's yeah. on this team. Go Lions, what's going on? Tell me your grade. He's been a subscriber for me for a long time. I'm curious to see. Let's talk us about some undrafted free agents. What do you think, Antonio Hightower, who is your best undrafted free agent that possibly could make the team? I guess I got to go with uh, Chad Surratt. You know, all the undrafted free agents are pretty solid. You know, they're, they're kind of guys like, that could have been drafted, but you see why they didn't get drafted, um, including uh, Chas Surratt. And then I forget the other guy, the Adams guy from Notre Dame, I think. No, no, no. It wasn't Notre Dame. The Adams uh, Arkansas, guy too. Arkansas State. Yeah, yeah, him. I like him yeah. too. Um, I, I like his upside more than Surratt. But currently, because, you know, Surratt is going to be an, another big body to go at fails that you picked up earlier. Um, it's going to be real – it's going to be a real dangerous dump ball threat. Problem is, he's not going to separate at all. But he's going to be a high effort guy. He's going to help you run block. You notice, notice all the line, run, um, all wide receivers, line split up, can run block. But yeah, um, he's probably my favorite. I don't, I don't, I didn't, you know, I think all the um, undrafted free agents were pretty solid. I think Adams probably has the most potential out of all of them. But, so Rob's probably my favorite right now. Four ninety nine super chat from John Booker between Adams, McKinley, and Surratt. Who do you think is the best chance to make this team? I know they gave a hundred G's to McKinley, but I love Adams' potential. Well, that hundred G's tell you he's probably going to make the roster. So just going fiscally, that would make a lot of sense right there, no doubt about it. But we're talking about Tommy Kramer. I think he has. A, I think he's sneaky. I think he's sneaky, so I'd look for him as well. I love Sage Surratt, just like Antonio Hightower said. I actually had him in one of my mock drafts coming to Detroit, so getting him as an undrafted rookie is fairly a good thing. We have a new member, P Blues. Welcome to the crew. We do live streams and everything behind the scenes as a member, so I appreciate you getting in there. You got emojis. And uh, you can hit me up, and we can get this thing cracking on the channel the way you like it. Linda Brennan is in the building. She likes to smell smell some things. That's fairly rotten. We know about her and what she brings to the table <laughs> or what smells at the table. Cy, what is a player in this draft the Detroit Lions got that is extremely undervalued and he could potentially be a – a solid player in 2021. Well, I don't, I think we got all the uh, juice out of the limit, man. I mean, out of, out of the oranges, whatever you want to say. I mean, of, of the drafted players, man, I, I mean, I like maybe Derek Barnes. I mean, I'm, I'm really feeling him at a um, middle linebacker, uh, somebody that went a little bit later, but I think it was going to have a vital role in our defense moving forward. So, uh, but I think everybody was drafted appropriately. Uh, Melifanwu, you know, who who seems to have some scheme versatility. Uh, you know, he, he could play uh, either corner or safety. I mean, he's a big guy. Uh, I like everybody that we drafted, man. I think we just drafted. So um, I can't specifically point out one, but I think collectively everybody's going to contribute. Carolina guy has a question. It says, ISN, how do you like waving on Johnson? I love it, man. I was going, Woo! I was going, Woo! and another, Woo! when I heard that he was waved, I'm, I'm done with the on experiment. I was extremely happy. We are live with Troxel Sports Talk. When it happened, make sure you go to his channel. Check out that live stream with Benny Blades. Lions great. But I, I was happy about that. The panel seems fairly happy about that as well. And um, so if you want to hear the initial thoughts, you got to restart this stream here. Nick says, is Dylan Moses still available? I know he didn't get drafted. No, he's not available. He is on another squad. And I like Dylan Moses as well, but 
he is definitely an injury-prone player, so it'll be interesting to see if he actually can stay on the field. And Jacksonville, can... I think, picked him up, right? Jacksonville. Yeah, that's what uh, Bryce is saying in the chat, that he went oh. to Jacksonville. Okay. I'm not Swift and Williams now. I'm trying to see. If you got questions, folks, let me know. Why not sign Moses? Yeah, he's not there anymore to be signing. No. So, no. yeah, he is no longer there. Who in the chat? What do you think about signing another free agent? Let me know of a free agent player you'd like to sign out there that's available. Are you willing to spend some money? Are you not? What do you guys think? I'm not wanting to spend a whole lot of money myself, but that's just the way it is. McKinley will make the team. He is a beast. No doubt. Yeah, they got Tebow for sure. Blades was a great player. He was a fantastic player, and he's a fantastic guest yesterday. That guy is hilarious. What's also not, though, fantastic is we had 133 in the building with 52 thumbs up. Let's get those thumbs up, folks. Let's get those thumbs up to 100 likes. Scary Terry is a Seattle Seahawk. Sheldon Richardson. Melvin Ingram. I'd like to have Melvin Ingram as well. Throw him on the defensive line. I think that could help out for sure. What do you think about Melvin Ingram at Troxel Sports, Trox Fury Sports Talk? I mean, I like him. Um, he has some familiarity with uh, Anthony Lynn, so, you know, he could kind of help direct the uh, the defensive coaches and how to use him, what, what his strengths and weaknesses are. You know, it's just... For me, with a Melvin Ingram, it depends on the money, and it depends on his health. But I mean, if he checks both of those boxes, that's a that's a that's going to be a steal for us. I'd rather have Kenny Vaccaro personally. Oh, facts. That's who I'd like to to get. Who also we has are... a history with the uh, what do you call it? This New Orleans Saints. So we have no connections yeah. to New Orleans Saints. Not one named Man Bamble. <laughs> There's no connection there. At well, all. even our defensive uh, coordinator and our uh, secondary coordinator, our secondary coach. Yeah, yeah, not at all. From, There's no yeah. connections there. It'd be yep. great to have Aaron Glenn and, and Kenny Vaccaro <laughs> because we do have a massive hole. Do you guys want to see Harris at uh, starting safety for the Detroit Lions? No. <laughs> Why for yes? If, if, uh, uh, no. No. If Vaccaro is no. my option, if Vaccaro is my option, then yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let me know in the comment section. Do you want Harris as our starting safety? Let me know. I say to the no, no, no. Now I'm that would be Malik Hooker. You know, maybe I'll say no. I anybody, love Malik Hooker. Anybody, but but him. Let me see here. I mean, Malik Hooker also has uh, youth on his side a little bit. Yep, and he was putting a scheme that used him horribly. I don't know why they drafted him just to put him in a scheme that didn't fit his skill set. Yep. What Cassandra Braden says, if Levi is a bust, would you think less of Brad Holmes? I'd start to wonder that there's a curse on the second round draft picks yeah. at this point. <laughs> like, what yeah. is going on if he's a bust, Cy? What ha what if he a bust, do you think different of Brad Holmes? Absolutely not. I mean, you, 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 there's no such thing as 100%. So it's all a crapshoot at the end of the day. I mean, that's like, you know, a first round bust. I mean, you can't think any less of the GM. So, I mean, busts occur all the time. So, I don't think getting drafted in the second round could be a bust anyway. So, no, I wouldn't think less of him. Great question by Nick Russo. Do you think that Melifon Wu possibly moves to safety? I think, look, he is a multidimensional player and versatile, exactly what we need for this Lions secondary. I've talked about it. I think it's one of the better pickups we have. He could be our Amani Awarie of the 2021 NFL draft. I think he can play safety. If we look, if we have a hole at safety, this six-two guy needs to be in there. He's better than Harris. I don't care. He's a rookie. Fast. Let's get this man on the field. And if he can't get out there on the outside, or if he can't take over the nickel spot, throw him at safety. And and let's get this defense starting because I am extremely worried about that safety position. And I think Melifon Wu can play there. This year, yeah, he's going to have up and downs if he does because he is a rookie, but it's better than having nothing but downs with Harris Mark Orham from Orms Forum. Yeah, for sure, man. He's big enough to play safety, 6'3", 215 pounds. Um, I think he's better at press corner, though. Um, I don't like that he's not as – he should be a lot more physical at 6'3", 215. I think you have to be more of a physical player, um, more of a playmaker if you want to get moved to safety. and. and in my opinion, um, I think it's a possibility, though, because we are just so weak there. I don't want to see Will Harris. You might see a few guys. You might see a few guys get 
get moved to that safety position um, just so just so Will Harris doesn't have to play because I, I I don't think he's a very good uh, a safety. He's more of an in the box kind of guy, and uh, that's what he was at Boston College. Um, so we could see a little bit of an experiment going on, and um, Malafon who could maybe get moved over there during camp. We'll have to see what goes on there. Trey Boston would be a good fit for safety. Sigh with his head. Talk about Trey Boston. Yeah, I, I would love it. I mean, why not kick the tires on it? You know, the, the guy's a talented guy. I think, he, he again, you, you talk about he could play both safety positions. So, absolutely. I, I love to sign Trey, Trey Boston. Kevin T., do we bounce Big V after this year? I'm going to give it a, about an 85% yes. We're going to bounce him after this year. He is the one individual who's getting paid a lot of money and he's not doing a whole lot. Now, he was a little bit hurt last year. Maybe that was an issue. We'll see. If he can get back to form, that'd be fantastic. I don't I don't want him to suck. That's the thing. I want him to be good. But Well, he's getting moved to guard, that's for sure. Yeah, he's getting moved to guard. <laughs> he ain't taking over uh, Panay Sewell, that's for right. sure. So we'll see. If you guys got questions, do a hashtag Lions, hashtag NFL, hashtag ISN. The hashtag really helps me be able to see what a question is. The comments come in fairly quick. I'm running 10 things at one time, so that would help me out. Also, smash that like button. Let's get to 100 likes. I hashtag ISN. It's Flowers on his way out in Detroit. Not this year, that's for sure. It, it, it's hard to tell with Flowers. It's hard to tell with a lot of these defenders because this scheme last year, last two years under Matt, man, man, ever since Patricia been coach, has been garbage. So can he do better now that we got interior defenders such as, oh, such as the... The whole depth, we got Michael Brockers, we brought in everybody. Can he now perform better since he's not going to be a main target? I think he can. What do you think, Corey? Do you think that Trey Flowers can pick it up this year and and save his Lions career? I mean, you know, he's got Aaron Glenn coming there, first-time coordinator and everything. I, maybe, hey. It's quite it's quite a possibility. You never know, uh, especially if he's trying to fight for his job and fight for um, – fight for to get paid hey interesting motivation for a man is sometimes getting uh busted down a couple of chops so <laughs> wrong and again that's absolutely <laughs> right though that's absolutely <laughs> right <laughs> bryce love done or can detroit pick up their true speedy back what do you think i i seen i already seen mr mark Lauren from warm form shaking his head what do you think mark no, I'm not really a fan of Bryce Love, man. A lot of injuries over there. Uh, you know how it is, right, Cor? Oh, with, with, yeah. Y'all with don't. That guy right there. Too many injuries. Never really got on the field. I don't know if he even got on the field at all for you guys, nope. did he? Nope. Yeah, he so, never got on the field. Yeah, so it's a guy that I would not – I don't want to bring in a guy that's just hurt all the time. It's What's the point? Um, we can see what this regime is already doing with guys that can't be available. Uh, Carry on Johnson's one of them, man. They, they've shown him the door, man. You know what I mean? It's – uh. But like we like like we preach, man. Like we preach, best best ability is availability, and um, I don't want to bring in a guy that could possibly be okay. I think our running back room is going to be okay. I want to give a plus one hundred here to one pride forty with the great avatar there, doing the Panay Sewell in the Oregon Duck uniform. Yes, the Oregon Ducks, not Michigan, not Michigan State. Huge shout out to One Pride Forty. He says, "Who has more pressure, Goff easy. or Stafford? This one is easy. Stafford easy. has got way yeah. more pressure than Goff. Yeah. I yeah. mean, they think they think Jared Goff is going to lick windows and eat crayons this year. <laughs> I would say he's in Detroit. What pressure do you? What pressure do you get in Detroit? Zero. Zero, Zero pressure. Zero, Zero pressure. pressure. None. Yeah, I, I think mean, I think everybody looks at him as a uh, failure anyway. So he has no way right. but to go up. You know, so." Yeah, that's what he's doing. Stafford got a lot of pressure. He needs to get to a Super Bowl. Okay, if he don't, he because win a Super Bowl, he got to win a playoff he game. First. He's he's gotta, play, but no, he's but I mean, like, game. no, yeah. but I mean, they went all in for a Super Bowl True. win. All right. like, well, yep. We thought they were. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. they are. Yeah, he's got a lot of pressure there. Stafford does, does. not. Fine. Hashtag ISN. How much better? We are we now after the draft? I think we're better. I'm not going to say we're great or anything, but our defense was so bad last year and just getting defenders in the middle and and kind of solidifying the defensive line is really going to help. And I think that getting Panay Sewell is a major upgrade 
on the offensive line. So I think we're better. But with that said, you know, we're, we have a really tough schedule in yeah. this year. And so I think maybe the, the wins and losses is not going to reflect it. But I yeah. do think that the team is better defensively, is better when it comes to running the football. And ultimately, that makes it a little bit better. Cy, you kind of agree in there. Yeah, I think uh, you have to kind of look, measure it. I mean, I think we, overall we got better on the defense. Uh, we lost our – the complexion of our offense has completely changed. Uh, we we did get stronger up front, I mean, but we lost one of the better quarterbacks in the NFL and the receiving core is depleted. So if you're looking at it as a – in totality, I think we're better in the long run. Uh, definitely, you know, because we've strengthened the, the trenches – uh, but for this year, like you said, Mike, we have a brutal schedule. So I don't think you're going to be able to see the immediate results. But, you know, two to three years, man, I think we really got some. So, yeah, I think we got better. What do you guys think that's listening? Do you think the lines are better and not better? Put B for better, put N for not better. I want to know what you guys think. I think we're better. But, again, just like Cy reiterated there, I just don't think this, you know, the wins and losses is really going to reflect that. ISN, you willing to take a flyer on Trey Turner at guard to fully solidify the O-line? I just don't think they're going to because we, we've spent a lot of money on Vati Vaitai. And I think that we drafted, you know, we well, we picked up a free agent there, Tommy Kramer, and I think he can help out, you know, the backup. And then you got Stenberg. So I don't think they're going to do that at all. I don't think they're going to pick up another guard. If they do pick up a guard, all it is is a camp body who will probably get cut before I, the regular season. I will say this, though. If they only offer him a one-year deal, I wouldn't mind kicking the tires on a uh, Trey Turner. You know? I wouldn't mind either, but I just don't think they're going to do it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But I'm just saying, like, if, if it's like a one-year deal, I, I would absolutely love it. But like you said, Mike, I, you know, are you going to, you know, spend money re -keep, or keeping your guys or are you going to spend your money – adding more uh, free agents. Like, you got to be financially sound when it comes to uh, roster building. You got to be fiscally responsible. Alan Dana says B. Big West says better. Eric, better. Steph, better. Grid, better. Nine drinks, hashtag lines, better. Cy. Hey, I'm happy that he says better. He's on this panel here. <laughs> we, got, we got Jenkins B. Lions aren't good. Josiah, really? I, man, I never knew that. Let's see. Hashtag Lions. Bold prediction. I think the Rams will be bad. I, you know what? I could see them not being. They think that this team's a Super Bowl contender, but I don't. I mean, they're in a tough division, man. They they could yeah. miss the playoffs, and it wouldn't surprise me. Could we sign Richard Sherman as a veteran on defense? Uh, we could, but I, he's not coming here. I don't yeah. think so. He would go to a competitor that's probably near the Super Bowl you know, look for teams you know, like San Francisco 49ers. You just go right back there. Seattle Seahawks, I know he's talking about that. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, if they really want to go again. I mean, I, I just don't see him coming to Detroit. Team we to tried to sign him for. a couple years ago, and he said no. Team to look out for, the Chicago, or, uh, the Cleveland Browns. Very they well. Could take a, they could take a flyer on uh, on Richard Sherman. One Pride 40, if we are bad next year, will we draft Thibodeau or a quarterback? Depends where we're sitting at. If we're yeah. sitting at the first pick in the draft, it always goes quarterback. I know a lot of people say, well, Thibodeau's the best player in the draft. Yeah, and again, they'll go quarterback with the first pick. So it just depends. Yeah. I don't think we're going to be the first pick. I'd list the Houston Texans to be the first pick in the draft. That team's in a world of hurt. I'd love to get Thibodeau. Man, ooh, we we're talking about the defensive line getting after the quarterback with the best pass Whoa. rusher ranked right now, Mark Orm from Orm's Forum. What do you think about <laughs> Thibodeau? Yeah, man, this is my number one guy already in 2022 so far, man. This kid is the real deal. Watch him play, man. It's He just jumps out, out the screen. Um, he's 6'5", 255-plus pounds. He's not the biggest guy. He's, he'll probably end up playing linebacker in, in the NFL, mm -hmm. um, is my guess. But the guy is the real deal, man. He gets after it. He, he is a bona fide stud. Antonio Hightower, what's a better fit, Vince Williams or L.J. Fort? Um, probably had to go with Vince Williams. Although L.J. Fort and Vince Williams both kind of fit the scheme. Three, four inside linebackers. Position that we still need. Um, but out of the two, I probably had to go. Um, out of the three, I probably had to go with Vince Williams. Sigh. 
What do you think about K.J. Wright on a one-year deal? I, I don't think he, he's not a scheme fit. Uh, he comes from a 4-3 defense. He's an outside linebacker. Uh, it's just different philosophies altogether, so I don't think that's a good fit at all. If the Lions get a second pick, third pick, and a fourth pick, who would he take right now? I, You know, I'm... I have not really done a whole lot of research on this upcoming draft. I am not high on Sloven, and I'm not high on Howell. I know those two quarterbacks. I am not high on either or. I know they got us yeah, taken yeah. in a mock draft. Mike Jones, the 28th pick. Who? Mike Jones. So that will be interesting. <laughs> as long as it ain't the Eric King. Josiah, oh, no, yeah, I yeah. don't. Miami? Yeah. I do not have any eyes really on the 2022 NFL draft as of yet. Mm. Ask me this question after about week six, seven next year. I've done a lot of research right now. It's extremely preliminary, not a whole lot of depth at all, just because I'm taking a break. It's it's a long process when you're evaluating all these players, the five million that are out there to evaluate. You guys have any eyes on some draft prospects? Not right now, and and we don't even know where we're gonna draft. We uh, we ha- we have no idea where we're gonna be in this draft. So, um, no hashtag monkey. go Lions, go Lions. Let's see some Lions pride in there. Do some go Lions. Let's see if you're a Lions fan. Do some go Lions in there, or or something of that nature, and we will get at it. Get some of that. We love that forward down the field, and so hopefully we're gonna be hearing that a lot next year, running that football. When the Rams fall this season, we could have two top ten picks. That would be amazing to have two top ten picks, Corey. What do you think, man? You think the Lions could get two top ten picks? Somebody's crazy enough to pay the price for it. Yeah. I, um, y'all could get them, but I don't know. It, it, kind of looking at the comments and everything, y'all don't – like people talking about quarterback, I don't think y'all need a quarterback. You got your quarterback on the roster. Exactly. I take him. I, I take him in a heartbeat over what we have um, yes. with the, uh, Heineke broke down Allen and um, the the homeless man at quarterback. I I, I would take I would take Jared Goff in a minute <laughs> and embrace five him. Games. Yeah. Um, so y'all, if y'all want to get him, y'all want to get him solidified up both sides of those lines and everything. Like I said, y'all could compete, man. ISN, what rookies will produce day one besides Sewell? I Derek think a Barnes. lot of. I yeah. think uh, Amon Ra St. Brown is going to produce. Derek Brown's a definitely a good one for sure. Yes. Si, what do you think? What rookie besides Panay Sewell is going to do well for the Lions as a starter? Hey, I'm all in on Levi Onzerike, man. I just love the, the not only what he possesses physically, but just his mentality, his spirit. He gives everything, man. This guy is really wanting to get out there and make a difference. He enjoys inflicting pain on the opposition. That kind of passion and with us making this culture shift, I'm telling you, this guy is going to be a beast. Levi Onzerike, that's my most. Yeah, and hopefully soon we're going to have him on here as well to talk some Detroit Lions football. Folks, in memory, because he's not dead. He's in the chat right now. Of the great TA Noble Sports, here in Detroit, we want a strong D. Let's do hashtag strong Ds. I'm giving her a D, man, a strong a strong D. I want to see you guys spam the comment section with some strong Ds because this Lions needs a strong D, and maybe it will help for sure if we just get that in the comment section. Do you think we get any prime time games this year other than Thanksgiving? Yeah, I think we're going to get... Watch this. Is I think this is a Monday night game for sure. Detroit Lions versus Los Angeles Rams. Yeah. I mean, you have two form, two quarterbacks that switch places. Sean McVay issues with the pipe. I mean, we got all sorts of stuff <laughs> going on. I think that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that that is definitely going to be a prime time game for sure. Troxel Sports Talk. Absolutely, I definitely think that's going to be a prime time game. Uh, actually, you know. Real talk, I wouldn't mind that being a Thanksgiving Day game. Having uh the Rams and the uh it's at, it's at, oh it's at the Rams. Yeah, That's right. Can't do it. Oh, oh gone yeah. it. That would have been. I must. I want this Thanksgiving game. That's one of the few prime time games we get. Yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah. I mean that would have been that would have kind of been a little 
a little bit of fun, especially since uh, you know the last few uh, Thanksgiving Day games, we haven't been walking out victorious. Yeah, that no. sucks too. Um, Trox says strong D. The Gray's Matter Exchange says strong D. I love the name change, strong D from Trox again. He loves those strong D's. Bash, strong <laughs> D. T A Noble Sports, strong D. So do most women. Omar, oh my Ew. God. <laughs> strong D Trox, he really wants that strong D. We got <laughs> we got Jeb with a strong D on the warpath. He likes a big strong D. Strong D from the Carolina guy, Todd Monroe, Randy Daniels, and Jeb Large. Jeb has got a large strong D, and uh, he wants to make that D stout. That's for sure. <laughs> Hashtag ISN, do you think Tate is the best free agent wide receiver left right now? Would each you guys actually sign him? Golden Tate. It depends what type of contract he wants, and does he want to come back to Detroit? Bring him uh, home. Bring him home. I, bring I wouldn't him home. mind having Golden Tate. You know, Amon Ross St. Brown's like a Golden Tate. Imagine have two Golden Tates. It'd be a nice mentor, going to teach yeah, him too. Sure. Yeah. For from sure. a, from Cy, a what do you think about aspect? What do you think about Golden Tate? He's shaking his head to the no, no. Yeah, I don't have a uh, an affinity for Golden Tate like everybody else does. I think he did well while he was here. I think he's a super. I call him a super slot receiver. I think it's some value, like you said, from a mentorship standpoint. Yeah, but as far as what he actually brings to the table and where he's at in his career, I mean, I don't think it makes a, a whole lot of difference. So, Alan, do you think they're open training camp up, up to the public? I hope so because I'm going to be there for sure um, ch chilling out at training camp. I already got that planned out. If they open it up, I'm going to be there for sure. I enjoy I'll be being with you, there Mike. and seeing it. Troxel's going to be there as well. He wants to see that thing open up, so hopefully – I don't, I'm not 100% sure. Who knows? But hopefully. What do you guys think of us running at 3-4? We had this conversation on the back end about the Lions running at 3-4. Antonio Hightower, what do you think about this? Um, personally, I always thought it was obvious the Lions going to run 3-4. The personnel is fit for 3-4. The Rams ran a 3-4. And after the draft, once they drafted Liam McNeil and Levi, it was kind of obvious to me they was going to run a 3-4. Um, this, this personnel fits best in a 3-4. Um, they, yes, it's the best thing for our team. Can't wait to see how they do it. Hopefully, run some one gap in three four, which it seems like they are, and just you know, see how some of these guys like hand will see how they play in this one gap in three four instead of being in defense focused on gap control and holding the line. Get a defense that's focused on penetration, and getting upfield. It's always good about penetration. Got the Dan Campbell soup, hashtag ISN. Hey, so are we. Let's no, see. Don't uh, worry, Campbell Micro Soup Mike. D. Soup D. <laughs> Soup full of D's? Mm-mm, good. <laughs> so gay. Okay. All right. Uh, I don't oh, know what man. I got myself into. Man. What's going on? Oh, <laughs> that style was good, man. Oh, we're down the field. <laughs> oh, oh, God. <laughs> Oh man. Oh, oh man, that thing went south real quick, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you're killing me here. You're killing me, Smalls. <laughs> killing me, Smalls. Oh. <laughs> Don't worry, Micro Mike. We'll get you in, even if they're not open. But they will be. That would be cool. But hopefully, they open up. I would love to get there at some point. Let's see. One pride Sean McVay put in golf that would wasn't winning but wasn't supposed to be an offensive genius. Yeah, that's my thing. Is it really? You know, he's blaming golf, but could it be Sean McVay, Trox, that's the one failing, not Jared Goff? Is it possible that I the genius is not a genius? I definitely think that. You know, the last genius even was a Detroit Lions head coach. You know, he was such of a genius – he was a rocket scientist, and uh, we all seen what happened with that. Now, you know, Mike, you've been seeing it for the for the yeah. longest time. You know, it, it, is it really Jared Goff, or did Sean McVay's offensive system truly get uh, truly was uh, figured out in the National Football League? Mm -hmm. Oh, we got that. Okay, in tone. 
Where that means he disagrees. <laughs> I a thousand percent disagree. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Um, Don't you disagree? Nick was definitely not the problem with the Rams. I definitely disagree in this situation. Um, I wouldn't call McVay an offensive genius, but he's definitely one of the best offensive minds in the league. After Andy Reid and Kyle Shanahan, he's right there. Um, dudes came in. Rams have won every single year. Ten plus wins, three of the past four years, including, I mean, you know, making it to Super Bowl, in which Jared Goff was the reason they lost that Super Bowl. Um, no, it wasn't. Yeah, I'm, no, Jared it Goff was, was missing wide open guys all year. Okay, all that game, Why? including remember okay. he missed. Remember he missed um, Brandon Cooks for that touchdown. Or that okay. Other, other, okay. What about when uh, Todd Gurley never even seen the field? You got to run the football. If you don't run the football, everybody just got to put eight men in the in the backfield and go ahead and say, say you know what? I dare you to run because I know you ain't. Okay, you don't even try, have your best you player out, out on the field. Let me ask you this though: if this if this receiver is open and the QB don't hit him, you blame the QB or who you blame? I if mean, there's I guys both. you can hit. If I there's play- guys you can hit, and there was there, it wasn't like there was like they couldn't do anything. They couldn't move the ball because Jared Goff was missing guys, right? Yeah, but if you're hit. if your quarterback's having an off day, what are you going to do? You're going to run you're the football, lose. get that ball out of his hands. I mean, either the, your tight end, end the day, or though, your running back has got to be the guy. At if the end your quarterback of the day, though, is having a bad let day. me say this. At the end of the day, though, if your quarterback is that guy, he won't have an off day in your biggest game of his career. That's not that's not only the biggest game of his career, that's the biggest game you can possibly have as a football player. That is the game you cannot have a bad day in. Oh, that's fast. Out of anybody. And if anything, that tells me more about golf than McVay or anybody else. Yeah, but I, I mean, I, you know, I, I say it's weight to be determined. Can't especially can't, because um, same here. Yeah, I, I say it's got to be weight to de- be determined because everyone said, "Oh, it was Belichick was the genius." Then, then, yeah. then uh, Tom Brady goes and wins a Super Bowl, right? And Belichick ain't in the playoffs, so I think and, it's weight. Every, to, it's a to be determined if you want to. Yeah, be and every Lions fan, Mike, every Lions fan will blame McVay. You know, now we got Goff. Now we got Goff. There's no way it's his fault. You know what I mean? just it's said it's be too big to determine. It's, it's, too e- it's too easy. Yeah, you have to. We don't know yet, man. We don't you really know yet. sit back and we'll see because it just yeah. it all depends. We don't know. We don't know what was going on behind the scenes. I mean, like, I'm giving have blame. no idea. Maybe they hated each other. I'm I'll tell you what, man. If your boss hates you, you tend That's not right. to do as good as, as you, you want. Yeah. So, see, I'm giving blame to both sides, like Golf and hey. uh, McVay. But – you know, it it's not all on Jared Goff is what I'm trying to get at. I just say, 100%, right, yeah, let's all 100%. sit back and we're gonna find out. We're gonna find yeah. real quick. Hashtag guy saying who's going to the LA game? I am and Grid is. As of right now, we are going. Who wants to fight to be cut? Me. <laughs> uh, he don't bring a strong D, but I think he's gonna get one more he chance. Bring a softy. Yeah, he gonna bring. He Boom. brings a softy. Someone says something. Who is that? I don't know. Let's see here. Hashtag I said, what Lions players are on the hot seat? Well, that phone call is definitely on the hot seat right there. <laughs> right. Um, hashtag I said, let's see. Players in the hot seat. Jelani Tavai. Yeah. No doubt about it. Yeah. Hey, R.A. Hey, have a good one, Corey. Appreciate you getting right, on, man. Yeah, thanks for All having right, me, fellas. See you guys. Adios. Uh, I think Jelani Tavai is on the major hot seat right now. Yeah. I think Halapludi Vati Vaitai is on the hot seat when you got a Stenberg right there sitting back. For mm-hmm. sure, he's Tommy there. Tommy Kramer, too. Yeah. Tommy Kramer. Yeah. Who, who's doing the mm? mm. Oh, I think I was just, I was just agreeing. Mm-hmm. Okay. I agree okay. with everybody you said. Even uh, my cousin, hey, Deshaun Hand. Yeah. I think, yeah. you know, he's, you know, as much as we love him, I know me and Trox love him. I don't think we've gotten everything that he has in him, but hey, we're loaded on a defensive line, so I think yeah. some the bug eyes are going over his way as well. How about yeah, Antonio you might even Bryant? See Trey Flowers too. Trey Flowers could be on the hot seat as well. Tony yeah, O'Brien, not, not the contract. That dude's on a real fire, man. He got to stay healthy. Next year. He yeah. got to stay real <laughs> yeah. healthy for sure. Um, mm. Bills saying they're cutting players who don't get vaccinated. Who wow. would be an ideal player wow. to steal? That's kind of shocking. 
Anybody uh, that comes out of there, I'll be trying to uh, take a flyer on. <laughs> <I know. Yeah. laughs> they wow. made it to the playoffs in one playoff games. Yeah. I'm curious to read about that. I literally yeah, just right. got out of work, so I haven't read it. Um, I need to see that story. Yeah, yeah. So Moan Josh it. Allen. I mean, that's <laughs> yeah. right. Uh, okay. <laughs> Don't get back to yeah. here, Josh. <laughs> Please. Hey, man. Uh, the, hey, Diggs, come on down yeah, here, man. Exactly. Right? Wow. <laughs> That'll be interesting to see because I know Taylor Decker's not getting – vaccinated he didn't he was he didn't want to do it he said for personal reasons so yeah who Man, knows gotta respect it yep seems like flowers is the odd man out in the three four and doesn't fit kneecap mentality aka injury prone do we trade him we can't trade him right now yeah he's, no. yeah. yeah he's locked in for at least this year no uh, yeah. zach J actually brought up a great player austin bryant Oh, yeah, so yeah. I was, yeah, I was just saying Austin Bryant, man, he is on a work. Look, yeah. man, this dude better step up or he's going to be to. stepping out like carry on Johnson. Facts. Who we all knew. Let's be honest here. Who knew? I, I want to do a little bit of poll in the chat as well, as well as on here. Who knew carry on Johnson was gone when we selected Jermar Jefferson Trox? Did you know he would be gone? Facts. All so, facts. Did you know he'd be gone? Easy. Tony Hightower, did you know he'd be gone? Yep. Mark Orm from Orm's Forum, did you know he'd be gone? I had a strong feeling he was gone. Yep. Let's see. We got Patty Grimes saying, why? Vash, yes. Jeb Large did as well. D. Williams knew. Yeah, man. We knew that writing was on the wall. The guy was not performing. Big D73, what's going on, buddy? He says, I did as well. Hey, I knew it before then. When we signed Jamal Williams. Yeah. yeah. I knew so, it, yeah. yeah. I knew it even before so, then. After yeah. last year, he was negated. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> right. <laughs> Some one... Yeah, yeah, his, this yeah dude, his role got demoted and demoted and demoted. And, yeah, I mean, man. next up was out. <laughs> There's not a whole lot left for him. <laughs> Folks, 20 <laughs> likes away from 100. Hit that like button. We got 151 in the chat. If you guys hit that like button... Let me know in the comment section. I'm curious to see who has hit that like button. Big D says, go or no, go Lions by Caven. One pride when Williams came in the room. Absolutely. I agree. Run to football. Yes, Jason, that's your that's your cousin, LOL. Don't forget about the Rams have a strong D. They have a very strong D. They definitely have a strong D, but they lost a couple players as well. What? What in the world was that? <laughs> Gray, sure. the Gray's Boy, Matter yeah. says, like, do you think Jonathan Adams is a hidden gem? I haven't really looked a whole lot. What say Could you, be. Antonio Hightower? Nope. What do you think, Mark? He could be man. He um he's a big bodied wide receiver man. He's not gonna he's not gonna separate though. But uh, he reminds me a lot of Kenny Galladay. Very, he's physically, he can jump up, he can jump through the roof, and uh, he's going to be a red zone guy. Um, he's really on, he's kind of, he was unguardable in, in college in the red zone. So um, he could be a hidden gem. He's a big kid, man, and he loves to block, man. He, he, he knocks guys on their butt. So he could be. Why care about cap penalties when we're not a win now team? Well, who knows if we have an injury throughout the season and you need well, to replenish well. that roster spot. You don't yeah. want to be able to not do anything. And, so we don't want to just, be negative. Yeah, yeah you have negative. to care. You have to care. Yeah, you yeah. have to care about that stuff. So, mm. yeah, th there, there's many reasons for it. Plus, if you're going to pay him this type of money, you might as or you're going to pay him, you might as well at least have him on the roster. Yeah. Might as yeah. well. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you're going to pay him anyway, so let him sit on the roster and do it. So that's to Trey Flowers and Vati Vaitai. Adams is great when facing the quarterback, struggles to track over the shoulder. Dro Jonathan Adam drops a lot of passes. We're drafting to win now, so why not win? Well, we're trying to win. That's the issue. I just don't know if it's going to happen. It's a brutal schedule. Just we'll see. I, I still we're building, think building, we're building. building. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. I never seen a running back at any level wear a knee brace. That was a red flag <laughs> right there. Yeah. Well, no that that's actually very common that uh. Uh, running backs wear a knee brace because they do take the bulk of a carry. 
Um, they get hit every sam- every single time they touch that football. Um, you know, whereas quarterbacks, they don't really take too many hits, especially with the league rules. But uh, it's not too big of a red flag. It's it's a red flag when uh, he's more on the uh, on the sidelines than actually on the football field, especially when you're a number two or I'm sorry, a second round pick. Two ninety nine mm-hmm. super chat from Nick. He says, "If Rodgers is gone, we're winning the division." Ooh, that's mm-hmm. a nice prediction there. Can the Lions win the division if Aaron Rodgers is gone, Trucks? Huh? <laughs> can he win the divi- Can we win the division if Rodgers is gone? Um, I mean, it, it's I mean, it'd be wide open, uh, depending on uh, uh, the quarterback position at of the uh, Chicago Bears. I mean, there's always a shot, absolutely. Um, especially when Rodgers is gone, that's you know the refs not having him in his back pocket, you know, in the N- NFC North. Mark, mm. do you think the Lions could win the division if Aaron Rodgers is gone? No, no, not just yet. <laughs> not yet, not yet, because I don't think we're winning a lot of football games this year, guys, unless unless we win a division at five five wins. I, I think if Rodgers leaves, I think it'll be I, I think it'll be Minnesota. I think Minnesota oh, will win. Yeah. I just I, – I, is there a shot? Sure. You know what I mean? There's always a shot, but I just don't think we're good. We, we just have enough to win – the, the amount of games that we need to win to win the division. So it's a no for me. Not $2 this year. Super Chat. Two, he knew it. He knew it with a lot of laugh and crying emojis. Thank you so much for that Super Chat. Eric, you are a boss. You know what is also <laughs> close is 100 likes. We're 12 away. Let's get to 100 likes. We can do it before this stream ends. Vikings are going to be tough too as well, 100%. I think they're, they always draft well. Yeah. Chicago Bears, the fields can do good. I don't think he's going to do good this year. It takes a little bit of time for a rookie quarterback, but they do got a very strong D. Unless it's, you're the, unless you're, uh, what do you call it, Justin Herbert? Yeah, you know, Justin a Herbert person that everybody level. kind of threw threw in the trash. You know, Let's he could see. he could do it in his first year. Yeah, he Maybe. could do it. And they, who was who was his uh, head coach there? Was it Anthony Lynn? I think yep. it was. Yep, Who's our offensive was. coordinator? Anthony Lynn. Anthony Lynn. So that's hashtag facts. So we'll we'll see. I actually heard uh, something uh, on uh, Bleacher Report that uh, we're going to be running a multiple offense. Yes. Yes. We're going to be having a lot of whiteouts out there. A spread offense. So if you haven't heard that, the Detroit Lions going to do a spread offense. I like the concept of spreading the ball. Sure, we're going to see a lot of plays where you're going to have four receiver sets out there, and you're going to see Goff in the shotgun, and you're going to see him do that. So I think that'll be fun to see uh, if that actually takes place. But we're going to run the football as well. So yeah, we'll see. What's going on? The artist formerly known as PC Payload. Appreciate you stopping in, man, and uh, coming in the chat. Mike, were you a Joey Harrington fan? No, I was not. I like the fact that they got an Oregon guy, but he he was kind of weird. And I was, I don't know, he's kind of weird playing yeah. the piano and stuff, and just my, not not that my, my type of guy. But I did like the fact he was from Oregon. But it did ruin Oregon Duck quarterbacks. Everyone thought from there you can't get an Oregon Duck quarterback. Mar- Marcus Mariota as well. Mm-hmm. But now Justin Herbert killed that trend, and I appreciate it. Hashtag ISN is passing on a quarterback a mistake. This year, no, it's not a mistake. No. no. I don't think so. No. Side, no, do you no, think it's you, a mistake? Absolutely not. It's not the time. Again, we're, we're committed to Jerry Goff. Uh, we got at least two years that we're going to be committed to him, so uh, it's no sense in you know just sitting somebody down for to burn up some of those good years that are so precious of rookie deals. So, yeah. Uh, it, was, it wasn't a mistake at all. I know everyone loves Decker, but who is going to be the best left tackle, tackle option three years from now and when this team is peaking? If Sewell, why not make the change at left tackle right meow? Can't well, do it right now. What's that? Say so we can't do it right now. There's no. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Go ahead. Can't He can't do it right now. I think we're just going to push him to the right side, and that's where he's going to p- compete right now. Yep. Decker's doing fine right now, so I don't see a change happening. Yeah. 
But I do see Sewell possibly in three years moving over there, Mark. Yeah, true. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely, man. Um, Decker has shown no signs of being moved at all. There's there's no need for it right now. Um, Sewell has been practicing at right tackle, I guess, during uh, during all this training and stuff. And he's going to fit right in at right tackle, man. It's, it, it's like riding a bike with these kind of guys, man. These guys, he'll be fine. And, um, hey, and if Decker goes down, God forbid he goes down, you throw over Sewell, like, but we're going to keep at the right side. That, that right side needs to be solidified. You know what I mean? So we're good right now. No need for any changes on that old line. It's been yeah, a great show, ahead. folks. It's yeah, been an sorry. hour and 15 minutes, and it's that time to say goodbye. Tone, what do you got to say to the folks? Oh, Tone. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I was talking to myself. It was interesting coming in with you guys today. Um, you know, having some interesting, interesting conversations in the you know the chat. I ain't really get to answer all of them. I wanted, to, I wanted to you know hate on Jared Goff a little bit more, but you know, I had to do it another time. Um, yeah, I can't wait for this season. Um, also, we're not winning the Nerf. Um, um, the Nerf. I said that wrong. <laughs> what are we gonna get the Nerf gun over here? Nerf ball. Got that Nerf, Nerf ball. ball. We're not winning Nerf ball North. tournament, folks. Yeah, I don't Darn, think so. I wanted to win the Nerf ball tournament. <laughs> oh yeah, in the mud. Let's have a strong D. You know. Also, Trox loves big cocks. Oh <laughs> my God, that came out of nowhere. Hey, I hey, he's over in it, he's over in Dallas now. So now he's an arch rival. Yeah, the other D. <laughs> the other D. The other yeah. big D. <laughs> two D's, man. Two days. Two D's don't make it right. We got a ten dollars super chat here no. from Frog Crop, the MVP. We win the North. Put money on it, and it was enough weapons with the North team. We'll be better in Chicago. And Sharon Rogers having issues. That would be nice. Hey, Frog, I appreciate you dropping that super chat even at the end of the show. Your MVP. Man, if you guys have not hit that like button on the way out, smash it. We're three away from 100. What do you got to say, Cy, while we close this bad boy out? Hey, man, I'm just looking forward to the season. Uh, we got a, we got a little bit more work to do. Um, as far as, you know, I'm tempering my expectations. Look, I don't think we're going to be a playoff team this year. I'm not expecting it, and I'm not going to set myself up for, for letdown. Uh, I do think we're going to do – we're trending in the right direction. And, you know, if we make it, cool. But if not, you know, I'm not going to be uh, surprised by it at all. So love the uh, positive attitude, everybody. Thank you for the support. As always, thanks for the opportunity, panel. I always enjoy your uh, company. Uh, Mike, thanks for, for getting me up here. So have a good evening. No doubt about it. D. Reese, man, you came right at the end of the show. That sucks. But what's up to you? Mark Orr from Orm's Forum, what do you got to say when we close this bad boy out? And thanks for having me on the One Pride podcast. It was great, guys. Thanks, everybody, in the chat. Um, yeah, let's give Jared Goff a chance, guys. It was the right pick, picking Panay Sewell. We have to do this. Um, we have to support Jared Goff in this pick um, of, of Sewell. So um, let's go, Lions. Let's go. Man, Roger Guardo dropping in 1999. He says, can I get a let's go, Lions? Appreciate your all work. Absolutely. Let's go, let's Lions. Go Lions. Right, let's go, let's go, Lions. Let's go. Let's do a double for that 1999. Woo. Hey, Mike, let me do the uh, okay. let me do the uh, the front part of it. Just a little bit. Hey, appreciate you, uh, Roger Guardo, for dropping that 1999. You are awesome, man. Everybody that dropped a super chat, I appreciate you guys. You guys are the real MVPs. Without you guys, we're absolutely nothing out there. Uh, we're just a bunch of guys just talking Lions talk. We appreciate everyone coming in and enjoying it. Trox, what do you got to say we close this bad boy out? Well, I appreciate everyone who comes out to Necessary Roughness. Yesterday we had Benny Blaze, Lions legend, and the U Hall of Famer, uh, the one, the only, the hard hit and safety himself, Benny Blades. Appreciate each and every single one of you. Always supporting everyone's show on uh, on Thursdays, the, uh, the One Prior Podcast on Tuesdays, uh, Orem's Den, and on Wednesday. 
uh, you know, necessary roughness. So I appreciate each and every single one of you guys that come out each and every single week and supporting the channels. Uh, you guys have been awesome. Love you guys, and have a nice day, and I'm out. Peace. Hey, appreciate everyone stopping in. Appreciate the super chats. You guys are awesome, like I always say. Get ready for some more videos, dropping it every day. Of course, we got OPP every Thursday. We got the new show, Orm's Den, on Tuesday at 7 p.m. EST. A fantastic show hosted by Mark Orm. And, of course, we got Necessary Roughness by Troxel Sports, Trox Fury Sports Talk. So we appreciate everyone coming out. And I will see you on Tuesday, on Wednesday, and, of course, on Thursday. With that said, folks... Mark, you didn't get to go yet? I thought you did. I went. All right. With that said, folks, 